so able. You're so able. We trust you. We trust you. We trust you. shall love Yahuwah Eloheka with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart and you shall teach them diligently unto your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them upon the post of your house and on your gates. And it shall be when Yahuwah Eloheka shall have brought you into the land which he swore unto your fathers, to Abram, to Yishak, and to Yaakov to give you great and goodly cities which you built not and houses full of all good things which you filled not and wells dug which you dug not vineyards and olive trees which you planted not when you shall have eaten and be full then beware lest you forget Yahuwah which brought you forth out of the land of Mizraim from the house of bondage you shall fear Yahuwah Eloheka and serve him and shall swear by his name. Ye shall not go after other Elohim of the, uh, of the Elohim of the people which are round about you. For Yahuwah Eloheka is a jealous El among you. Lest the anger of Yahuwah Eloheka be kindled against you and destroy you from off the face of the earth. Ye shall not tempt Yahuwah Eloheka as he tempted him in Makkah. Ye shall diligently guard the commandments of Yahuwah Eloheka and his testimonies and his statues which he has commanded you and you shall do that which is right and good in the sight of Yahuwah that it may be well with you and that you may go in and possess the good land which Yahuwah swore unto your fathers to cast out all your enemies from before you as Yahuwah has spoken and when your son asks you in time to come 
saying, What mean the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which Yahuwah Eloheinu has commanded you? Then you shall say unto your son, We were Pharaoh's bondmen in Mizraim, and Yahuwah brought us out of Mizraim with a mighty hand. And Yahuwah showed signs and wonders, great and sore, upon Mizraim, upon Pharaoh, and upon all his household before our eyes. And he brought us out from thence, that he might bring us in to give us the land which he swore unto our fathers. And Yahuwah commanded us to do all these statues, to fear Yahuwah Eloheinu for our good always that he might preserve us alive as it is at this day and it shall be our righteousness if we guard to do all these commandments before Yahuwah Eloheinu as he commanded us hallelujah may Yah add a blessing to the reading of his word Shabbat Shalom Mishpaka. <laughs> Hallelujah, what a blessing it is to be in the house of Yah again among family. Hallelujah. Yah is so good. He is wonderful and he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to call upon our praise team again and we are going to bless the name of our Yahuwah. Hallelujah. All right.
this time. Any special testimonies? All right. Well, go ahead. Go <laughs> ahead, to call on our announcement clerk to come and give us our weekly announcements. Hallelujah. And then we'll call on Sister Tammy to announce our special event. We will be having Bible study on Tuesday at 6 30 p.m. And then on Thursday, we will be having our Hebrew based Bible study at 6 30 p.m. here at the church for both of those things. And then, as well as our next Shabbat, we will have um, Shabbat service at 11 a.m. But also, just a friendly reminder that everyone will be preparing for Pesach and the feast within, within that time. Um, and if you need any of our information, it is up on the screen. But of course, feel free to ask as always. But Shabbat Shalom. Alright, Shalom Mishpaka. Shalom, Shalom. So following today's Shabbat worship service, we will be gathering. There is a, a potluck, so we'll be having fellowship today. The men will break off and do their thing. The women will break off and have a tara, which is crown. Um, and so we will have our meeting in the dining hall area where we have our Bible study. And the men will break off and come this way. So feel free to enjoy and partake in the food. It's okay if you didn't bring anything. There should be more than enough to go around. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, wow. 
song requested that we made up last Shabbat. Um, and we're going to pray we remember. Hallelujah. And then it's really easy so everybody can literally join in. And that would be great.
Hallelujah. 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 Somebody say, take me to the river. Help me find the water. Help, no, this ain't no regular water now. Uh, this ain't the water out the fountain. Hallelujah. But this is that living water. Hallelujah. He said, take me to the river. Help me find the water. Hallelujah. Oh, praises to the most high. Yeah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're taking part in, we're drinking of that living water today. Hallelujah. He is steadily pouring into us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One thing about living water, it moves. Hallelujah. You know what happens to water when it just stays stagnant? Y'all know what that, what happens to water when it stays stagnant? It, it, it becomes dirty. Yeah. You start to see algae in the water and then disease and water. Hallelujah. So I encourage our people, hallelujah, move when the, when the water is troubled. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jump in when the water is troubled because when the water is troubled, that's where you can get your healing. When the water is troubled, that's where you can get your deliverance. When the water is troubled, that's where you can get you, where y'all can take you to having pain. So now you leave that pain, pain, to, to you leave that situation pain free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I, I praise Abba Yah because he said, out of our bellies shall flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom, family. Shabbat Shalom. I'm so glad to be here. Hallelujah. And I'm just so happy that Abba Yah has counted us worthy to see another day. He did not have to do it. He did not have to do it. Somebody did not wake up this morning. Hallelujah. Somebody closed their eyes for the last time and did not open their eyes. So when I was in worship today, hallelujah, I just began to pray and I said, y'all, thank you because you, you, you rescued me. Hallelujah. You rescued me when I should have been dead in my sins. I should have died. In my sins, hallelujah. But he did not allow that to happen, hallelujah. He, he, he kept me, yeah, I was doing my thing, but he kept me, hallelujah. He kept me when the bullets was flying, he kept me, hallelujah. When the drugs was in my system, he kept me, hallelujah. When I should have been dead in my sin, hallelujah. And I'm so grateful because that's something that he did not have to do. There's some people that can smoke or drink and do all kind of things one time and their mind is messed up. Hallelujah. And, they, and they're never themselves again. Hallelujah. But Abiyah has, has had mercy upon us even in the midst of our sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you can bow your heads with me. Total Rabbi. I be you Lord for being so good to us, for loving us, and being so kind to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Truly, I be you who we want to be careful with everything that we do and the things that we say. I be you who we pray on today that you bless us, that you pour into us. I be you who your living water. Touch our minds and our hearts today. Touch our, our, our souls. I be you who I pray now, be Yah, that you, that, 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 that person, that, that person that's going through on today, I pray that you hear, that you heal today. Yeah. Hallelujah. Those that struggling, I be out within themselves, struggling with sins. Hallelujah. Struggling with inner demons, I be who we pray now, I be I, that you can penetrate today, I be out those places that are corrupted. Penetrate those places today that, that have hurt, that have brokenness. We pray that you penetrate today. Hallelujah. And that you have your way. We bind the devil right now. Hallelujah. Who wants to hinder your people? Who wants to uh, take the word from your people? Abi Yahuwah. We bind his hand and his plot, his scheme, his wows against your people on today. And we command him to go. You have no place in here. Hallelujah. Have free reign today, Abi Yahuwah. Have free reign today. Hallelujah. Give us the latter rain. We thank you. For you already making a way for us and opening doors that no man can close. We thank you for being a provider. We thank you for putting food on our table, clothes on our back, and a roof over our head. We thank you, Abi Yah, that your word is life and it is meat indeed. And I pray, Abi Yah, that we be partakers of thy word on today. Touch our hearts today. 
Bless every family, Abiyah. Those that we that, that we are praying for, Abiyah, we pray now for them today. Have mercy. And don't let our people die in their sins, Abiyah. But I pray that you give them an opportunity to be saved. And we thank you. We glorify your name. In Yahushua mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. 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 All praises to the Most High Yah. I'm so glad. I want you to uh, get your your scriptures, and uh, I want you to turn with me to the. First of all, I want to say this. Turn, uh, turn to me. Uh, turn with me to the Book of Genesis. Genesis chapter six. chapter 6 starting at the 5th verse mm. hallelujah how many know that we living in the last days I know we've been saying that forever but we are truly living in the last days hallelujah and let me tell you something I know we're going to start reading in Genesis chapter 6 you know what you should said he said that as it was in the days of Noah so shall it be um, when the son of man is coming, right? He says, so shall it be. So it's going to be just like the days of Noah. So I want you to, we, we want to know what, what was going on in the days of Noah. Hallelujah. So that we can understand even the days that we're living in today. Hallelujah. Uh, let's go to Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. And I'll go ahead and read it. I'm reading out of the King James Version. Hallelujah. And it says, And Elohim saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So they didn't have any thoughts of righteousness. It says only evil continually verse 6 it says and it repented Yahuwah that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart let me read it again and Elohim saw he took a look he was he wanted to see what was going on in his creation he, he created this earth he created this earth everything all the goodly things all of the trees and animals and he created man. But it says that, and he saw. I want to click on his word, saw. The word saw is ra'ah in Hebrew. I wish I could put it up there. Um, but it, it, it means to see, to look at, inspect, perceive. So he took a look. He inspected, he inspected his creation. And he saw that there was wickedness on the earth and wickedness was great. And it's funny though, because there was no wickedness in his other creations, but the wickedness was in man. And then he says that, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented Yahuwah that he had made man on the earth and grieved him at his heart. And so, the title of our, our message today is True Repentance. What does it mean? What does it mean? Hallelujah. We want to be able to have true repentance. Hallelujah. Abiyah was the first one to, to, to show us what repentance looks like. Matter of fact, he modeled it for us. He modeled what repentance looked like. The word repent it means to feel sorry. In the Hebrew, it means to feel sorry. It means to, uh, to have sorrow. So Abiyah, he was not pleased in the things that he saw on the earth. So what did he do um, not to, uh, what did he do to the earth? Now we know the scripture. The scripture says that uh, Noah was the only one that found grace in his sight. And 
what Abiyah did through Noah was that he saved the remnant. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For there was always a remnant in the earth. He saved a remnant. It was eight souls that he saved that was on the earth because it was it. What, when it came to Noah, Noah didn't do anything to, to gain this grace. But he found grace. Y'all found grace in Noah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what happened was is that y'all said, get in the boat. I'm going to close this boat. I'm going to close it with my own hand. And, and, and I want you to get these eight souls in the boat. And I want you to get these animals. We're going to uh, we're gonna get these uh, male and female. We're going to get these animals and the creeping things. We're going to get them to come into the boat. Because I'm getting ready to destroy this earth. So I'll be out. What did he do? He destroyed the earth by flood. Not one soul outside the boat lived. Not one soul. I know they got all of these other things that they're talking about. It said giants, they, uh, uh, there were some giants that survived. You know, it's all, you see it in some of the old ancient manuscripts, but not one soul survived. Hallelujah. Not one soul. When y'all says something, that don't mean that he, uh, if he says something, he meant it. Let me say it like that. And he means what he says. So when he closed the boat, hallelujah, there was no other person that could be saved after that. It was over. And he flooded the earth. And then he said, I won't ever flood the earth again. He said, matter of fact, I'm going to give you a sign. And I know that the world, this wicked world, has turned the sign of a rainbow into something to mean uh, perversion. But don't y'all know it started with y'all first. Even though the world can turn things perversion, I'm telling you right now that it started with Yah first. Yes, it did. So he told he, he had a rainbow. He created a rainbow. Hallelujah. And he said, when you look at this sign, this is a sign that I will not flood the earth again. So he meant what he said. Yes, he, did. he didn't have nobody to repent to. And scripture says that he repented to himself. Hallelujah. He felt sorry to himself that he had even made man. And then when you go further in the scriptures, the scripture says later on that uh, that he was going to destroy the earth again. But it, was, but it won't be by, be by flood this time. He said the next time I destroy this earth, he said I'm going to destroy it by fire. Yes, he scripture says that I'm going to destroy it and then he said all of the elements is going to be burnt up. Hallelujah. So I want you to go with me to the Matthew chapter 3. We're going to read about John the Baptist. Hallelujah. And his ministry of repentance. Start at the first verse. Come. It says, The same day when Yahushua went out of the house and sat. No, no, no. I'm in the wrong verse. Uh, I'm sorry about that. 13. I mean, uh, verse 3. I'm sorry. Chapter 3. In those days, Matthew chapter 3. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Why did he say that? Why did he say that the kingdom of heaven is at hand? See, the thing is, is that Yahushua, when he prayed, he said, When you pray, ask the Father. He said, thy kingdom come. He's letting us know that the kingdom is coming. Yeah. When he said that the kingdom is at hand, that the kingdom is near. Awesome. Today, the kingdom is more near than it was yesterday. That's right. There was a day that was set on the calendar in Noah's day. And the scripture says uh, uh, that when God closed the door, that was it. There is a day, because the kingdom is coming, there is a day that the door of salvation is going to be closed and it's coming. So he said that repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he, talking about John the Baptist, this was he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah saying, the prophet of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of Yahuwah. 
make his path straight. And the, name, and the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and leathern girdle about his loins. And his meat was locust and wild honey. Even John the Baptist, while he was even when he was doing his ministry, he didn't care how he looked. He didn't care about the food that he ate. All he was, the only thing that he was worried about was kingdom. His, his ministry was kingdom. And, and, and it goes to show you the, the, the faithfulness that when he understood his assignment, that he didn't turn away from his assignment. No, what God gave him to do, he did just that. Fifth verse, it says, Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the regions round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. It says, But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who had warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Bring forth therefore fruits, meat for repentance. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that Elohim is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the tree. Therefore, Every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I. And here we hear John the Baptist, he's speaking about our king. Hallelujah. John the Baptist, he wasn't, uh, the, he wasn't our king. You know, you got some people that, that, that worship John the Baptist and the things that he did. No, he wasn't our king. The scripture says he is the forerunner. That means he went before the king. He prepared the way. He made sure that the way was good. Yes. He prepared the way for, our, for, 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 for us to be saved. Hallelujah. Then the scripture says that um, he, he said it himself. He says, there is one that come after me and he is mightier than I. Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. I can't even wear this man's shoes. I'm not even allowed to even step into his shoes, step into his calling. That's too heavy for me. That's too much for me. I am not worthy. But this man is greater than and mightier than me. He shall baptize you with the Ruach HaKodesh and with fire. Esh. He shall baptize you with the Ruach HaKodesh and with fire, whose fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then come it, Yahushua. I want you to listen to that. It says, then come it, Yahushua. After we read this scripture, immediately we notice that John the Baptist, he immediately, um, as soon as Yahushua come up on the scene, he immediately decreases. Yeah. He immediately decreases. He, he even said it in his word. He said, in this word, he said, I must decrease so that he can be increased. Hallelujah. Because he didn't want to step into the position of, or, 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 or be a stumbling block before Yahushua. No, he wanted to, he was the one to make the way. It wasn't for him to be a stumbling block. It was for him to make it, uh, make it uh, I would say this, to make it easier yeah. for people to receive Yahushua. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he didn't become a stumbling block, so he decreased so that he could be increased. Hallelujah. And John the Baptist was faithful to Yah. When Yah gave him that assignment, he was faithful and he kept moving. He kept going. He kept telling the people to repent. He kept telling the people to, to, to turn your life around. Hallelujah. And we understand that even later on that uh, John, uh, even in his ministry, all the way until the end, he was faithful 
Then he ended up getting his head chopped off and, and, and put on the platter before the king and, and some women. Hallelujah. But that was John's testimony. Hallelujah. That, that what God gave me, I'm going to keep it going until the end. And yes, he did. Hallelujah. So I want to talk about this. What is repentance? Hallelujah. So repentance in Hebrew, it means to feel, feel sorrow. It's nakah. Nakah. It means to feel sorrow. To feel sorry. Hallelujah. So let's go to James chapter 4. Hallelujah. James, and, and listen, I won't be before you long. Because we know we have some things that we have to do after this. So I won't be before you long. That's James chapter 4. Starting at verse 8. Hallelujah. What is repentance? The scripture reads, Draw nigh to Elohim, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Ye afflicted and mourn. No, he said, be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and let your joy be heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of Yah, and he shall deliver, and he shall lift you up. Hallelujah. So when we talk about, when it comes to sin, what is, what is sin? Sin is the transgression of the Torah. Hallelujah. When we was in Christianity, they taught us that sin was just missing the mark. When you sin, you just missed the mark. You just missed the mark. That's what they used to tell us. You just missed the mark. You know, when I was a kid, um, I remember cutting up, you know, we, and, and, and we, and we uh, walking by the, uh, the church. We may be walking by the church, cutting up, cussing, saying all kind of things. And as soon as we seen that church in the cross, what did we do? We walk by and say, God, forgive me. Forgive me, God. Forgive me. As soon as we see a church, I don't know whoever, who's been there before. I've been there. As soon as I seen a church, God, forgive me. And then as soon as we get to the corner right past the church, we go to cutting up again. Did I repent? No. But at the time, I thought I was. I thought that when you repented, you just asked God to forgive you. And you keep on moving. But as we come into truth, we understand that repentance is much more. I said it's much more. Yeah. Hallelujah. So repentance means to feel sorry. It also means to know that you've done wrong. To know that you've done wrong. If I know that I've done my wife wrong, if I know that I've done my, my brother wrong or my sister wrong, hallelujah, the scripture says that you ought to go to your brother and confess your faults so that you may heal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ain't no point in keeping sin in. Ain't no point in stumbling and, 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 and keeping sin in, trying to hide your sin. And we're going to get there talking about hiding your sin. Hallelujah. So the first step is that we got to acknowledge. We got to take responsibility. Let's go to Psalms 32 and 5. Hallelujah. Psalms 32 and 5. It says, I acknowledge my sin unto thee. This is David speaking. And my iniquity have I not hid. I will confess my transgression unto Yah. And thou forgavest the iniquity of my sins. Selah. He said, I acknowledge my sin unto thee. So the first step is, is to acknowledge your sin. To know that you have done wrong. And we just read in James the type of posture that we need to have when we know that we have sin against the Almighty Yah. When we have when we have sin, you should have a, 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 a heart of sorrow. When you have sin against Yah, you should have a, 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 a you should feel sorry for what you did. You should uh, go to Yah even with tears and asking Yah to forgive you of your sins. Hallelujah. This is the type of heart posture that we need. And let me give you a story. Even David. The scripture says that David 
he had his eyes on this woman named Bathsheba. He, he, he loved her. He, he lusted after this woman who was another man's wife. Hallelujah. He seen this woman and she was getting undressed. And his lust pulled him so to the point where he laid with this woman. Then he took the, 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 the husband and, and devised a scheme to get him killed so that he can have this woman as his wife. All the while doing this, he was blinded by lust. It wasn't until David had a conversation with Jonathan. And Jonathan gave David the revelation about what he's done. What did David do? How did he react when it was right in his face? The scripture says that David was so sorry about what he did. About what he did. He, he, he was blinded by lust. And let me tell you something. When they say love is blind, lust is blind. Hallelujah. See, y'all wanted us to stay away, especially from lust. See, lust ain't just the things that you deal with, the, the, the things that's sexual. No. Lust is more than the things that, the, the, the sexual things. Yeah. God told them, he said, when you get over to this new Jordan, when you, when you get over Jordan, when you get into the promised land, he told them, don't lust after the people. Don't lust after the, don't lust after the things that they got. Hallelujah. There was a time where uh, um, Israel, they lusted after having a king because they seen other nations had a king. Yeah, that's true. And didn't realize that they had the king above all them kings. Hallelujah. They didn't realize it. So I mean, y'all said, you know what? I'm going to give you exactly what you want. The type of king that you say you need. And what y'all did, he gave them Saul. He gave them a king after their own heart. Hallelujah. And what did Saul do? Yeah, Saul was tall and he was handsome. Hallelujah. He, he looked good on the outside. Hallelujah. He looked like a king. But inside of him was no king. I said inside of him was no king. Because he would not bow down. He would not uh, 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 humble himself to the king. Hallelujah. So this is the difference between Saul and David. I don't know why I'm going here, but let's go here. This is the difference between Saul and David. Hallelujah. David, after he sinned, hallelujah, hallelujah. he was so sorrowful. Hallelujah. He, he went to Yah and he asked Yah to forgive him. He wrote all kinds of songs about Yah forgiving him. Turn my heart from presumptuous sin. Yeah. Don't let presumptuous sin sit on my, the, the, the throne of my heart. But what happened to Saul? Because when Saul disobeyed Yah, Hallelujah. He didn't consult with Yah. No, he didn't. Hallelujah. He did not consult with Yah. He said, I, just, I, I decided to do uh, what I wanted to do. Uh, hallelujah. So he went about doing his own thing. And Yah was so upset with Saul because he gave him simple instructions. Hallelujah. He already gave you the people into your hands. But no, I got to keep the king. I got I, 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 I to gotta keep the oxen. I got to keep the sheep, though. This is the best stuff. I said, you know, I'm going to give this to y'all. I'm going to offer this to y'all. But he said, obedience is better than sacrifice. Hallelujah. And because he did not obey y'all, what did y'all do? Y'all cut him off. He said, Samuel, go get me another king. He said, cut him off. I am no longer with him. I am no longer with him. And I said this before. I don't want to be in a place thinking that I'm doing God's will. And the whole time I am cut off. What a scary place to be. Because that is a place of a reprobate. When you're thinking you're doing God's will. When you're thinking that you're doing God's way. That when you're thinking that you're doing God's word. But the whole time you have been cut off. It's a sad place to be. And God allowed this man. He allowed him to still be king. 
king while he was looking for his real king. And what happened? Hallelujah. Samuel went to Jesse's house. Hallelujah. I don't know why I'm going. How do y'all thank you? Hallelujah. So Samuel, he went. Hallelujah. He went to uh, Jesse's house. And Jesse had some fine sons. They looked good. But the oil would not pour over these boys. He said, do you have anybody else? He said, well, I got this little old scraggle in the back. Old ruddy little thing. He probably smell like sheep. Hallelujah. He's right in the back. He don't look like he worked two pennies. Hallelujah. But they didn't understand the things that was on the inside. Even his own father didn't understand what was going on on the inside. Hallelujah. Even his own father was looking on the outside. That's the reason why we gotta have eyes like y'all. Don't look on the outer appearance of man. Hallelujah. And that's how our people is falling down. Because they're going after the preachers. They got the most money. They're going after the preachers. They got the most members. But I'm here to tell you that you will be bamboozled to follow these men. Your status don't mean God is with you. I said your status does not mean God is with you. Hallelujah. So what he said, he said, uh, he said, there's this old scraggly one in the back. Hallelujah. And he went to uh David. And see, y'all knew the testimony of David. David, as a uh, as a kid, he took care of a lion and a bear. Yeah. Hallelujah. So it had nothing to do on his, on his outside, but it had everything to do with his heart. Right. That he was courageous. Right. Right. When it came to protecting sheep, he already had a, he had a, a shepherd's mindset. Right. 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 Hallelujah. He knew how to take care of his sheep. Hallelujah. And I can see Abiyah being so proud of this young man and seeing the potential that this man had. Oh, this is my great man of God. And the oil poured over David. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And see, David, even after becoming king, he sinned. He did. He Not only did he sin once, he sinned multiple times. But why was David still a man after Yah's heart? Because he stayed before Yah with tears. Whenever he sinned, Yah told him, don't number the people. He numbered the people anyway. He stood. Then once once y'all punished him for the sin, hallelujah. Because let me tell you, sin, you can't you listen. There is always some repercussions when you sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Especially when you know that you got the commandment and you go ahead and do it anyway. You might as well be looking for the whooping. Hallelujah. With your eyes closed. You might as well be looking for hallelujah because that whooping is coming. Hallelujah. But the scripture said, whom the look, who, whom y'all change, who, who, who whom y'all love it, he chased. I said, whom y'all love it, he chased. So if you're not getting that, if you're not getting that whooping, you know, the kids that be having their eyes closed when it happened. Hallelujah. If you're not, if you're not getting that whooping and y'all ain't tearing you up for your sin, you a bastard, according to the scripture. See, that was that was Saul. He was a bastard. He was no more whom y'all called. Hallelujah. Because of his sin. And then when he saw somebody for his sin, did he saw did he seek Yah? No he, no. he saw a person that was into witchcraft. He didn't seek Yah. Uh -oh. But we see people that's into witchcraft. So let me talk about this. See what this this is what's wrong with people. Hallelujah. And this is what's wrong with people. Hallelujah. They they seek after the wrong thing. Matter of fact, they seek after the right thing according to them. They seek out the right thing according to them, but it's the wrong thing. It's the wrong thing to tickle their flesh. Hallelujah. To tickle their ears, itching ears, as the scriptures say. Hallelujah. So Saul, he knew who not to go to. He knew who to go to. Hallelujah. And, and listen, the prophet was already gone. He waited till the prophet was dead to seek the prophet. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He waited till the prophet was dead to seek the prophet. Hallelujah. But you got people that's going out and they're seeking their secret sins. 
seek it. And they're seeking for everything else. And the truth is right in their face. The truth is right before. Hallelujah. And we had took a look at the scripture. Hallelujah. We took a look at the scripture the other day. We was looking at the first commandment. He said, and you shall have no other Elohim. Uh, before me and I took a look at the word me what was the word me what did it mean again hallelujah somebody go seek that out what was that Naheem right it means panim. it means face so this is what Yah was saying he said you shall have no other Elohim's in my face and you know what people have done they have put all kind of things in his face. Put all kind of things in his face. Do all kind of things in his face. And the scripture says that the eyes of our Elohim is in every place. Beholding both good and evil. So when you sin against Yah, you can't hide. Because you're doing it in his face. When I got that, oh, I crumbled. I said, oh, goodness. We all need to fix ourselves up. We all got to walk up right. Hallelujah. Because when you make a mistake or you do things contrary to his word, you are doing it in his face. You're doing it in his face. Hallelujah. So, David acknowledged, but Saul didn't. Saul didn't take responsibility for his sins, but David did. We got to take responsibility for our sins. Verse number two. I mean, second point. Confess your sins. Let's go to Leviticus chapter five. Verse five. We in the Torah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come. And it says, and it shall be when he shall be guilty. In one of these things that he shall confess that he has sinned in that thing. Can somebody else read that for me in a different version? Hallelujah. But it says, and, and this it sounds good already. But he says, and it shall be when he shall be guilty. Because whenever you break, uh, when you break the, the, the Torah, hallelujah, you are guilty. Scripture says that if you sin at one point, you are guilty of breaking the whole Torah. Hallelujah. So he said guilty in one of these things that he shall confess that he has sinned in that thing. I'm not going to go there. Uh, but in the book of Joshua, the scripture talks about one of the Israelites named Achan. Yeah, so when, when, when Joshua and, and, and Israel, when they were fighting, they was winning all of the battles. Every battle they was winning. Then out of nowhere they started losing. Joshua was like, what's going on? He went to Yah. He said, what's going on? Yah said, it's sin in your camp. Go figure it out who it is. So what did Joshua do? He divided all of the families. He ended up, find, he ended up finding out that Achan had the sin in his camp. That's the reason why we don't practice sin. When you practice sin and you in the Mishpaka and you just worshiping and you still doing sin, don't you know the sin not only affect you, but affect those around you? So you got to be careful that you don't sin. I'm not saying that you won't sin. But when you do, confess it. Confess it like it says in Torah. Confess the sin. But Achan did not do that. When they uh, took care of business, the scripture says that Achan, he got some of the accursed things. And inside of his tent, matter of fact, Joshua pulled Achan out and he asked Achan a question. Achan, you got something? You, 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 did you go against Yahweh what we said earlier? Yeah, I did. And then he ended up confessing later. See, the thing is, even if you confess later, if you judge, you judge. <laughs> That's the reason why you don't see him. Because he confessed later. He waited to confess. He waited until his sin will, was found out. You know what the scriptures say? That your sin will find you out. So what happened? He asked him. He said, yeah, 
It's in my tent. It's, it's in the ground. I buried it. And see, he tried to bury his sin. He, he knew it, though. He acknowledged and knew that it was sin. But he tried to hide it. So what did uh, Yah told Joshua to do? He said, take everything that he owns, all, all of him, his, his, uh, his family, hallelujah, his, uh, his oxen, burn his house. He said, burn it all. Kill it all. And the scripture says that once he did that, the plague left Israel. And they began to win again. He told them, he said, kill it all. So we got to be careful because your sin not only affect you, but it affect the people around you. That's right. And you're wondering why I can't get the victory. Why we can't get the victory. Hallelujah. Because your sin is affecting me and it's affecting you and them. It's affecting everybody. So we got to confess our sins. We go to Yah. Acknowledge and then confess it. I have sinned. Don't wait until you are already judged to confess it. But Yah is so loving and kind that he, he'll judge you. <laughs> he'll, let, he, he'll give you a whooping. So that you know where this sin is. And confess that sin. That's the type of Yah that we serve. That his grace, it, 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 as, as much as sin abounds, grace abounds much more. His grace abounds much more. That's, that's in the book of, um, I want to say Romans chapter 6. Hallelujah. Our next, um, next line is turn to Yah. So after we acknowledge and then confess, our next step is to turn to Yah. See, the thing is, when I was a kid, I was sin. But I wouldn't turn to I wouldn't turn to the most high. Even when I was a Christianity, I was sin and then I'm like, oh, you forgive me. But then I'll still be fumbling and stumbling over the same thing. I never understood what it really means to turn. See, the thing is, I don't know why, but I know it's for you guys too that when you hear it in the in, in, in Hebrew, it does something different. It, it just it, it resonates more with you. So let's go to uh, the book of he uh, Hosea, chapter 14. Hosea, chapter 14. And I'm already close to being done here. Hallelujah. It reads, O Yasharel, return unto Yah thy Elohim for thou hast fallen by thy iniquity what is iniquity it's lawlessness hallelujah it's lawlessness so he says oh Yasharel return unto Yah thy Elohim for thou hast fallen because of your lawlessness hallelujah he said take with you words this is this is this is prevalent right here. He said, take you words, take with you words, and turn to Yah. Say unto him, take away all iniquity and receive us graciously. So will so will we render the calves of our lips. So he's talking about the 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 the, the sacrifice of our lips. So he said, we will render the sacrifices or the calves of our lips. He said, turn. What is turn in Hebrew? To turn means to shub. To turn means to shub. It says, and I'm going to read some of it. It says, to turn back. With the idea of return to the starting point. It also means to return home. Hallelujah. It also means to turn back. To turn back to Yah. Shoot. So when we acknowledge and then we confess our sins, we are to turn to Yah. And then after we turn to Yah, 
we got to worship and give him our all. So the thing is, our, we, we have to turn to Yah with all of our heart. We have to turn to Yah with all of our mind. We have to turn to Yah with all of our soul. Hallelujah. Be turned to Yah and yield not your members to sin again. Yield, yield not your mind to the same sin. Yield not your hands to the same sin. Yield not your feet to the same sin. But yield your members to Yah. This is us turning back to Yah. And then when we turn to Yah, we obey. His word, his, his, his Torah, his teachings, his instructions. We turn to him and then we obey. Ain't no point in turning to him and then disobey him right in his face. But turn to him and obey. And Yah knows those that are his. And if you name in the name of Yah, depart from iniquity. Depart from it. Don't let it be part of who you are anymore. For you are a new creation in Hamashiach. You are a new creation. All things have passed away. All and behold, take a look and see that you are brand new. That I'm no longer the same person I used to be. Hallelujah. The person that I used to be, you wouldn't even recognize me today. Hallelujah. I did not talk like this. This was not me. Hallelujah. But that's because the devil was driving my life. He had the front seat and I had the back seat. I couldn't even sit next to him. He had me that much. I was in the back seat and he's driving me wherever he wanted to drive me. But we got to flee from worldly lust. We got to flee from youthful lust. We got to flee and we got to run from these things that so easily beset us. Paul was talking to the Galatians. He said, who have bewitched you that you should believe a lie? Who have bewitched you? Who have turned your heart from the Almighty Yah? That's the reason why you got to be careful who you give your ears to. Because then the person that, that's speaking, they're they going through their own brokenness. They're going through their own tribulations and problems. And if you're not guarded, that's why he told us to guard our heart. If you are not guarded, then you allow anything into your gate. You allow anything to come in to sup with you, to commune with you, to fellowship with you. And then if you're around it long enough, it's going to turn you. Who have bewitched you that you shall believe a lie? So after we acknowledge our sin, confess our sins, and turn to Yah and obey his word, obey his commandments, we ought to show some fruit. This is my last one. We ought to show some fruit. Hallelujah. You ought to produce the Ruach. The fruit of the Ruach. It's not the fruits. The fruit singular of the Ruach. When we turn to Yah and obey His word, this is what we should produce. Love. Joy. Peace. Long suffering, faith, meekness, temperance. Hallelujah. We should, when we turn, this is the things that we should produce. We should show fruit. And you know what Yahushua said? He said, when you don't show fruit, that there's already an axe head to the to the root of the tree. Hallelujah. And you don't want to be that one that's just showing some leaves. You look good. But you ain't showing no fruit. The leaves look good. I mean, they green. It's water by the world. <laughs> but where is the fruit? Where is the fruit of you? Where is the fruit of your love? 
I don't care how good you can preach. I don't care how good you can sing. I don't care how good you can prophesy. If you have not love, you're nothing. Love is, it, it covers a multitude of sins. That's the reason why we got to walk in love. When we walk in love, we fulfill the commandments. When I love Yah, I'm going to come to Shabbat. I'm a, when I love Yah, I'm going to seek His word. When I love Yah, I'm going to pray every day. Because I love Him. He is my life source. Where else can we go? You have the words of eternal life. Uh, yes, yes. Where else can we go? So when He is your only source, you're going to lean on Him for everything. And then when you walk in love, you're going to love your brother. You're going to love your sister. And let me tell you something. Stop walking in unforgiveness. We're almost to Pesach. And we're working on getting this stuff out of us. Stop walking in unforgiveness. If you have a problem or an issue, go to your brother. Because why? Your brother may not know that they have offended you. They may not know. And then you carry this. You know what Yosha said? He said, leave your gift at the altar. And see, when we was in um, Christianity, we used to think like, leave your gift. We're talking about just your singing and, <laughs> you know, your, your preaching and all of that. Don't you know you are the gift? You are the gift. He said, present yourselves as a living sacrifice. What he's saying is, don't go before me and start worshiping me when you know you got an issue with your brother. Don't go before me with, with a smile on your face like you got it all together and you got an issue with your brother. Don't do it. Because guess what? It comes off as fake. And y'all don't like fake. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to be real in here. And we got to walk in this realness. We talking about this word, this Torah. We got to really walk this thing and not talk it. Be doers of the word. Not just hearing the word. Deceiving yourself. You are a deceiving yourself. When you act like you got all the power in the world, but you still get on the phone and you know, so you see the shoes she had on, girl? Hallelujah. All right, the way she bent her neck the other day, I think she got a problem with me. We got to be careful. Get this sin out. Acknowledge your sin. And then if you don't know, say, y'all, help me to examine myself. He said, so let a man examine himself. You have to examine yourself. And then once you know, conf uh, acknowledge it. And then confess it. If you need to confess to your brother, you need to go to your brother or your sister and tell them, listen, I've been feeling like this towards you. And every time I pray, my prayer is hitting the ceiling. You know why? Because I haven't been keeping Torah. Let me, let's go to Leviticus. And this is my last scripture. Leviticus 28. Uh, not Leviticus, uh, uh, Proverbs. Proverbs 28 and verse 9. <clears throat> Hallelujah. The scripture says, He that turneth away his ear from hearing the Torah, even his prayer shall be abomination. Your prayer is abomination. Because the Torah said to love your brother as you love yourself. The Torah also says to love Yah with all of your heart, mind, and soul. Now, if you put putting things before Yah and put Elo Elo Elohim's before Yah in his face, then you, then you might have an understanding of why the prayers ain't being answered. So we got to what? Tear down the idols. Tear them down. Throw them out your life. Those things that, that's before Yah. Those things that you put before Yah. Get rid of it. 
do something with it. Throw it in the trash. Don't give it to nobody else because then you will destroy somebody else. But throw it away. Discard it. Get, get rid of it. And then turn to Yah with all of our heart from a, from a pure from a pure stance, lifting up what? Clean hands. He wants us to lift up clean hands. When we worship, you shouldn't have malice on your hands. When you worship, you shouldn't have strife on your hands. When you worship, you shouldn't have wrath on your hands. When we worship. Because then you are bound while you worship. You're not really worshiping. Hallelujah. We're standing all over the building. Hallelujah. I'm going to call out your throat. If you can come and pray for us. Hallelujah. Let's come to this altar. Hallelujah. Let's come to this altar. Hallelujah. Thank you, 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 thank you
children of that promise. We are the children of promise. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Yes, yes. Oh, we ask for the children's prayer. Yeah. 